Sure, incentives matter. Uh, people like doing things they find attractive, and they dislike doing things they find unattractive. And uh, uh, taxes make people unattractive. And so what you can find is they can respond to those incentives in many ways. Uh, if you tax people who work and pay people who don't work, don't be surprised if you find a lot of people not working. If you tax rich people and give the money to poor people, uh, you'll get lots and lots of poor people and no rich people. Uh, and likewise, if you have two locations, A and B, if you raise taxes in B and lower them in A, producers and manufacturers and people will move from B to A. If that's what I'm talking about today is the economic of states and just what has happened over the last 75 years with the 50 states in the United States. And we have compiled all the state data that you could possibly wish for. And I'm just going to be di discovering, just showing you the, how the obvious is obvious. Those states that have raised tax rates have repelled people, jobs, output, employment, and they've gone to those states that have lowered tax rates or not raised tax rates. And the standard of living has risen in the states that have lowered taxes, and they provide better public services. But other than that, I have no message whatsoever. Uh, replacing Obama? He's, he's a huge impediment. Uh, you know, W was as bad, well, maybe not as bad as Obama, but he's really bad, too. And uh, we've had uh, 14 years of disastrous economics in this country, and, and now can we turn that into one of the greatest prosperities of all time? And I'm going to tell you, I really think we can. Uh, I, when you get old like I am, you've lived a long time, and I've been to this barbecue before. And uh, back in the late 70s with the real president, I knew it smelled good, but I didn't know what it was. But I now do, and I think today we're, we're just in 1978, and we're just about ready to break into a huge prosperity, always following on the heels of people who were totally incompetent, like Obama, Reed, Pelosi, uh, W, and uh, Paulson. Oh, my God. I mean, how could you pile on so many people who know so little? But that's what happened. And now we're about ready to take off into really good prosperity. Incentives matter. And that if you tax something, you make it less attractive, and they do less of it. And if you subsidize something, you make it more attractive, and they do more of it. The last thing you want to have happen is you want to have the government tax good things and subsidize bad things. That just makes no sense. And I know it, it appeals to your inner soul of fairness, but fairness has to be clear-eyed. And the most immoral act a government can ever perpetrate on its citizenry is to enact policies that have the effect of destroying the production base from whence all benefits ultimately flow. The best form of welfare is still a good high paying job, period. Well, I don't know the Institute very well. I don't, I'm not very much of an Institute group. Yeah, I, I'm the type of libertarian that won't even join a libertarian club. I'm teasing you. I'm not really a libertarian. But I think it's, you know, this is a get-together people of, uh, of, of serious nature who like to inquire into really what's going on. And I hope my book and what I'm talking about today will really give them a good flavor as to what's going on. I mean, we've had in the last two years probably seven, maybe eight states in absolute conflict and conflagration over tax cuts, whether it be Kansas, whether it be Ohio, whether it be uh, 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 Rick Snyder in, in Michigan, or whether it be uh, Scott Walker in, in Wisconsin, or Sam Brownback in Kansas, or Rick Scott in Florida. And, you know, those battles going on where everyone says you can't cut taxes because you'll hurt schools, my foot. In the ranges we're talking about now, I'm not saying at the high or at zero, but in the ranges we're talking about, increases in tax rates have led to a diminution of public services for the poor, the minorities, the disenfranchised, not for improvement. And if you think inner, inner city black teenagers are better off today, you need your eyes examined and you need your head looked after. Because it, it's, it's a disaster what we're doing to those very helpless, or homeless, or the people who really can't defend themselves, but they believe the rhetoric of nonsense of, of accountants 
when in fact economics is all about how do you create prosperity. Make sense to you? That's, well, that's why I wrote Enterprise Zones back in the early 1970s. You know, how do you help the inner cities? And I, I made a proposal that made them tax-free zones. So you bring the jobs in and create the prosperity. I mean, and you know, we need to get to thinking seriously rather than talking rhetoric. The, the well, next... Paul's kind of picked up that, that idea. No, he hasn't. Uh, no one has yet. Uh, he's proposing, as you probably know, eliminating the payroll tax on the first $20,000 of income. The only tax we have that's any good in this country is the flat tax. And that's the payroll tax, the closest thing. We don't need to mess with that tax. We need to mess with the very bad ones like the progressive income tax, uh, the corporate profits tax. I mean, the gift of the state tax, all of those are disgusting. I mean, truly repulsive. They, they penalize all the things we supposedly honor and then we go out and reward all those things we supposedly really don't want. No? I mean, why do you put, why do you, why do you give speeders speeding tickets and fine them? Get them not to speed. You know, why do you tax cigarettes with this huge excise tax? Why? Get them to stop smoking. Okay, now why do you tax income at very high rates? Get them to stop earning income? Why do you tax e-cigarettes that are healthy. Uh, exactly. Rates. Now you're going to get into real trouble. I mean, that's what I've done the big book on, uh, the handbook on tobacco taxation, theory and practice. Well, it's a big book and summarizing all the literature. And you get all these people who profess to be doing good. And, you know, I'm an ex-smoker. I hate smoking. My mom died of lung cancer from smoking. But you've got to solve the problem rather than give speeches. <laughs>